With a Super Collider extension class FB1, a feedback feedforward relation can be written in a form which is close to usual DSP notation and independent from the current block size. Using arbitrary nonlinear operations in the feedback chain gives many possibilities for experimental synthesis. The basic example in the left column shows how a simple one pole filter could be written. The definition goes into the function in the third line with two arguments named in and out. Then the index 0, written in square brackets, denotes the current, and index 1, the previous input or output sample. Main options are an arbitrary and variable lookback depth and array valued feedback fit forward, which allows the definition of complicated cross feedback relations. Besides the easy definition of linear and nonlinear filters, which are not contained in SuperCollider, the use of arbitrary arithmetic or trigonometric operators can lead to interesting results as well as the implementation of conditions into the defining function. FP1 is also used as a base for FP1 ODE, a class for the odification of ordinary differential equations. The implementation of FP1, following a concept of Nathaniel Virgo, iteratively applies the defining function to control rate eugenes while building the synth graph. This can result in a high number of eugenes, but not necessarily a high CPU load. It's a good idea to take a lower block size while interactive work in order to reduce compile times. Please see further credits and links to software in the right column. Thanks for your attention. Hello. As we can see in this SMC conference, physics-based modeling is not up to a vivid research topic. But at the same time, composers, musicians, artists still hardly jump into the design of their own, their authored physical models. One of the reasons may be that researchers and software designers still need to invent tools that serve better, in depth, the very difficult task of designing a physical model in daily creative practices. Our paper introduces the Physics Networks Scripting Language, PNSL, which enables scripting the design of physical models for sound and music computing, of course, but also visual animation and VR, gesture interaction with haptics and others. On the side of the core physics-based system, PNSL roots on masses interactions networks as defined in the good old Cordis Anima formalism. On the side of the programming languages, it builds over the tool common language Tickle. Then, PNSL enables designing your own physics-based models, possibly complex with hundreds of thousands or millions elementary masses and interactions, and with any topology included carefully crafted parts like a delicate lace if you want. During the poster session, I hope we can go through the specificities of this creative programming system, share examples, and more important, discuss with all of you. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Giacomo Lepri, and I am based in Queen Mary University of London. My paper introduces a set of reflections comparing the research domain of translation studies and data sonification. This to provide new conceptual metaphors for the understanding of sonification and related fields. Considering the similarities between translation and sonification might indeed provide a set of versatile and inclusive tools to frame different sonification approaches and purposes, including scientific investigations, design research and art production. This research is grounded on the idea that both sonification and translation share a common element. They are concerned with the transfer of information from a semantic system to another. Sonification is then framed as an act of interpretation, where the designer aims to adapt digital information into acoustic signal. According to this mindset, sonification can be conceived as a process of negotiation, where data are translated into sound, taking into account the cultural framework of the target community. This novel framing might help to open design spaces and differently approach sonification tasks based on their context and purposes. Hello, I'm Roman Romero, and I'm gonna present this poster. It's Rhythm Rangers, an evaluation of beat synchronization skills and musical confidence through multiplayer gamification influence. The aim of this work was to evaluate participants' speed synchronization skills through rhythm training with a multiplayer game. 
In order to achieve this, uh, a baseline skill evaluation test was constructed before and after a four-player rhythm game. Uh, for the baseline test, uh, players needed to synchronize their claps to a metronome and a simple beat audio loop, while for the game, players needed to synchronize to four different audio loops uh, and follow some specific game rules we designed. For this purpose, uh, purpose we designed and implemented our own devices and the ecosystem for the game. Uh, four, wear four wearable devices were attached to the back of the player hands and detected their claps. Uh, as you can see, the device in the bottom left corner on the poster. And also we have another device that served as a visual metronome uh, and decided the game rules. The results obtained uh, from the experiment show that uh, players improved their average local scores for the simple beat audio, but not for the metronome loop. And a dependent sample t-test uh, corroborated this, showing that the game had significant effect on the improvement of the results for the simple loop. But most important also, uh, all players uh, claim to have had fun playing the game. This study looked at how the use of the Chameleon Melodic Harmonization Assistant may have influenced the creative process of harmonizing a melody. To this end, our participants harmonized two very similar melodies, the first on their own, while the second after having interacted with Chameleon. Well, to give you an example, this is probably the most typical and therefore the most expected harmonization of the second melody. Let's have a listen. Now, when a participant comes up with something like this instead, the question that arises is whether the differences between the most expected harmonization and what was produced by the participant eventually can be attributed to an influence of the use of chameleon. I'll be very glad to discuss these findings in the poster session. In this contribution, we discuss the multifaceted aspects of designing and implementing real-time physically based virtual musical instruments. This involves a balancing act between model design, efficient implementation, expressive control, and accessibility. We illustrate these aspects through three recently developed virtual musical instruments using mass interaction modeling a virtual harp, a bowed mesh, and a bowed string model. We present a new element for mass interaction modeling called proxy module. It allows to smoothly interpolate topological connection points on regularly disposed matter such as discrete strings or meshes. This enables change in the location of coupling points between structures inside a model such as the excitation points or contact points, giving a much larger expressive palette to design models. Regarding real-time performance, we offer a benchmark of various mass interaction implementations in C++, comparing them in some cases to finite difference schemes. In cases where efficiency is crucial, we may also benefit from manual AVX vectorization, which speeds things up. Two of these instruments have been integrated into artistic works, posing new challenges in terms of flexibility and adaptability in regards to compositional needs. For more information regarding our work and mass interaction modeling, head over to micreative.eu. In this paper, we present an endless knob controller, which can provide several legislative force feedback. And in particular, we figure to apply such technology to multimedia productions. In multimedia production, many activities consist of repetition of several iterations. It's consisting of a repetitive task. In such a scenario, a multimodal feedback can reduce the cognitive load associated with the repetitive task, like parameter selection or waveform browsing. In particular, the tactile feedback can reinforce visual information to facilitate the detection of specific features of the waveform. Our knob generates the illusion of active feedback thanks to a programmable electromagnetic braking system driven by an Arduino microcontroller. The knob can be programmed to render different effects by modulating the braking force. Samples are deadens, barriers, fixed or variable torque. 
In the video on the right, you can see a simple demo showing different effects applied to a whip. In particular, it's possible to feel the instantaneous amplitude of the waveform, to explore the waveform within a fixed time window, or to modify some effect parameter. For each parameter, the resistance changes consistently with the visual tick display. For further information, please read the full paper or contact us. Hello, my name is Karolina Pravda and I am a doctoral candidate at the Acoustics Lab of the Aalto University in Espoo, Finland. Today I would like to invite you to get acquainted with the study I did together with Vesa Valimaki and Stefania Serafin, the evaluation of accurate artificial reverberation algorithm. In the study, we checked how well does the feedback delay network algorithm with cascaded graphic equalizer as an attenuation filter, reproduce room impulse responses. In the objective evaluation, we compared the measured impulse responses with the ones modeled using the proposed algorithm. The comparison shows that the decay in the mid frequencies is reproduced well, while there is an overshoot in energy of the high frequencies. We also performed a subjective evaluation in the form of a listening test in which we asked participants to assess the differences between measured and modeled reverbs according to the four qualities of sound. The results show that most of the time slight or no differences were reported. If you want to know more about the research and the results, I invite you to read the paper which is included in the conference proceedings. If you have any questions, Please do not hesitate to contact me. Welcome everyone, I'm Matteo Amadio and the project I'm presenting is a work in progress that started in 2019 as my thesis for the bachelor course in electronic music at the Conservatory of Music Cesare Pollini of Padua. Alberto Novello, which is co-author of this paper, was the thesis supervisor. In this research we present a set of real-time modules that digitally enhance the performance of a drummer. These modules extract rhythmic information from the multi-channel audio acquired using simple microphones onto the different drum parts. Based on the predicted tempo, the software generates complex patterns that can be manually controlled through high-level parameters or can be left automatic to adapt to the drummer's specific style. Our main goal is to sample the acoustic sound of the drums with all its nuances and extract high-level features such as tempo, cue onsets and density. Then we rhythmically enrich the performance by counterbalancing the drummer style with electronic sounds generated by some audio processes that are applied on the sound of the drum kit. Such an interactive system is intended mainly for an improvised solo performance that confronts a human drummer with a computer, but it could also be effectively employed in improvisations with larger ensembles or interactive installations. By scanning the QR code on the poster, you can find a video example that shows the functioning of the system when used for an improvised solo performance. The major downside of additive synthesis techniques is the amount of time-varying parameters required for their control. Our work proposes a method to exert a high-level control over additive synthesis attributes and their evolution over time. This approach allows to master a large amount of synthesis parameters through the definition of the behavior of a system, of which the parametric control is an emergent property. EET systems are network systems specifically designed to control the amplitude of additive synthesis partials. Such systems can be described as weighted direct graphs, in which the nodes are capable of migrating the quantity they contain, referred to as energy in this context, to other nodes through the arcs connecting them. The scheme of connections and the weights of the arcs are conveniently described as adjacency matrices which define the overall behavior of ET systems. Given an initial state and computing the energy transfers against time, we can attend the spontaneous evolution of the system. It is crucial to bundle its behavior between arbitrary limits in order to use it as a control device. The bounding is mainly accomplished in three ways. Clipping functions define the maximum and minimum values each node can take. A damping parameter is provided in order to arbitrarily interfere with the spontaneous evolution of the system. And last, a value called target amplitude provides a constant correction of the total amount of energy contained in the system. The music track you are currently listening to is a musical study creating using additive synthesis processes controlled by ET systems only. 
Thank you for your attention. 